Okay, so I wanted to show you this little bit of rigging topology, and quite simply, uh, here it is. Now, I'm sure most of you will think straight away that this looks pretty much like a body and shoulder and arm, and it is indeed, and that's one of the things that we're covering. Basically, one of the aspects that matters a lot to rigging is, of course, how you skin your characters, and a lot of that has to do with the topology and polygon flow that you've got going on in the base mesh. As such, it's really important to try and get good poly flow, but of course, there's a lot of different ideas about, you know, what the best flows are and so on. And there's a lot of confusion amongst users as to what they should try and do if they're not familiar with doing such things themselves a great deal. Now, no matter what different opinions there may be on actual topology and flow and density and, and so on and so forth, one thing that I can guarantee you is absolutely true for every single rig in every single packet is that the basic structure of your mesh topology should be very simple just like the rigs themselves. Rigs can be very complicated and fancy, but underneath, they rely on a few very basic relationships. Parent constraints, targeting, IK, and hierarchies, some expressions and whatnot to create slightly more complex relationship behaviors. But it all comes from a very, very simple base set of foundations. And the same should be true in your mesh. If you pick a rig apart, all of its controllers, you come down to a very simple handful of different control types that can be used. And if you undivide a you know, super fancy mesh, you should find something that gives a very basic, easy flow to deform well. And this, for me, um, is my favorite basic shape here. Um, it's useful in lots of situations. We're going to look initially at the arm and shoulder um, deformation here, um, but we'll also see how this comes in useful elsewhere. The other thing I love about this particular flow is that it's good in so many situations. If you're using subdivision surfaces to get nice smooth deformation with bones in a you know animation package for rendering, it works great. If you're trying to create low poly characters to go out into games but still have the right kind of flow and density to be able to get you know half decent deformation at shoulders and funny places, it's great. If you're using some kind of muscle system and you want a skin that wraps around it and gives you good lines um, for your crease maps and wrinkle maps and so on and so forth, it's great. And also in situations where you're using a pretty detailed subdivided mesh in your animation package with standard weighting, it's also really good for that. The point of course being that the base structure is very simple and supports everything that we need it to do. And then beyond that, you just subdivide to hell and that's your detail. Those inter topology and such stuff, there are two key points that make this work well. It's this guy here, the deltoid, which goes from the armpit and curves over the top of the muscle mass there, and the four point triangle here that leads us into the body and gives us an extra line of topology to run across our chest. All of these other bits, as you can see, are just a straight flat grid pretty much. There's some angular edges there, but it's basically a grid. So I'm just going to um, dump a copy of that and come back to it later, but let's pop our little fella out as we can actually see how and why this is such a great piece of topology. Okay, so here it is. Um, basically, when we skin a mesh to joints or bones, whatever, um, you know, it's just points being related to a, a deformed controller object. Now, obviously, you can smooth weights, you know, in between things. And, of course, if you're using some kind of shrink wrap, then, of course, you're able to smooth things off um, as, the, as, as the mesh collapses. It can wrap itself by iterating a smooth modifier on it. And, of course, with subdivision surfaces, you've basically got a low poly cage, which can collapse to a certain extent. And then, of course, the real-time subdivision comes in on top of that. But the more your basic mesh can support deformation without collapsing and twisting and going horrible, the better position you're going to be in for anything. Um, so I've selected here the points that are just explicitly the arm. And so when I rotate it in forwards like this, which is often a tricksy position. We can see what I've got straight away, of course, because of this quad we have here. It makes a funky shape, but of course, because of the way it will draw, or if this were triangulated in a games engine, it holds up the shape of our shoulder reasonably well. Of course, if we go into subdivision, see that we haven't got a proper bulge, of course, because we are so very low poly, we've got no ability. Um, but we have got a smooth, clean deformation. Um, and we can see, of course, if we look from for instance, the top view here, we've got this loop going round, and it's not 
collapsed in on itself, which is what we want. So we've got something that we can work with, so that's great. Um, and of course, the other one is coming down here, so we'll turn the arm down at the side and see that again our topology is, you know, giving us good stuff. Obviously, even in a games engine, we're going to have a bit of cross weighting, so you would have your adjustment going on here. Um, as you can see, it's very easy to manipulate your mesh with simple deformers um, to get a good and consistent shape, and your flow continues round following the lines of your character pose. Again, if we go for, say, the arm up over the head move there, where we actually bring up the whole clavicle and everything, once again, we're able to maintain a nice flow that's very easily corrected with, you know, additional bones, weighting, blend shapes. Now, if you're just starting out at skinning your own characters, really, I mean, you know, use subdivision surfaces, and this is honestly about as far as you need to go with the modeling, because um, it's really good to practice on a really blobby, super low-res character like this to, um, you know, learn how to skin the way that you're trying to do it. Um, you'll find it very easy and, and responsive. Of course, as we get beyond that, we want to start getting in some detail, so, you know, a bit of the old subdivision. And we can see that the flow that we get then is starting to get a lot more shapely for what we're after. Um, and we can see that, once again, as we go around these poses, start to see straight away how easy it is to just nudge a couple of rows of vertices here and there and still get the deformation that you're after. So with, you know, nice smoothed out blended weights between rows you will get clean deformation in the majority of situations. Of course as you start to come and do your forward poses and the like you've got intermediary points here used to, um, but you get the idea you can start to use to shape out deformation with some morphs as of course if this was wrapped over a muscle system um, the lines that are flowing will give some nice and smooth results. Um, so all in all, you know, I get round to shoulder topology, I find, for the vast majority of situations. And if you are starting out modeling a character, it's a great place to start. Now if we come back to the old um, base thing again, we see that I actually kept this for a reason. And the reason is that this shape comes in useful in other places other than the shoulder as well. In case you hadn't guessed already, um, it's going to be a hand and thumb Again, this gives just the right points and just the right sort of basic arrangement to get a thumb and hand topology that works really well for the kind of deformations that we want to use in this area. And so there you go. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and goodbye.